Hi there guys, it's Adan Ali123 and I'm gonna, today's video um, is gonna be on um, just some information and some tips on um, CBT which um, is a, stands for compulsory basic training um, which is something, it's a test kind of thing that you have to do um, before you can drive a moped in the UK. I mean, and the requirements for this are you have to be 16 years of age as a minimum, you have to be holding a provisional license in the UK, which you can apply from the EVLA, and you have to, um, uh, yeah, that's about it really. And you have to pass the CBT obviously to drive a moped. Or you could have, if you have a license, before, if you have, uh, sorry, if you've had your car license before February the 1st, 2011, no, sorry, 2001, then you're automatically entitled to drive a 50cc moped. And when you do your compulsory basic training, when you do your compulsory basic training, what this enables you to do is drive a 50cc moped limited to 30 miles an hour or 31 but, and you're not allowed to carry passengers and you have to display L plates both front and back so um, yeah and that's about it really I think and there's a weight limit on your moped which I don't know but and there's also a power output limit and oh yeah sorry for I'm trying to make this video quick sorry if I talk a bit too fast um, so basically on your CBT there's a few things you have to you do in your CBT training okay so firstly you have to book your CBT training which you'll have two options you you'll either be allowed to take your own bike or if you have your own bike you'll either take your own bike to the premises and all your own gear which includes helmet boots gloves jacket and motorcycling um, trousers so um, you take that's your first option. You have to take all of them to the CBT training, and if you don't already have a CBT um, certificate, then it's an offence to drive to the premises. So just bear that in mind. You probably have to get a van or something to get there. Um, or the second option is you go there. You don't need nothing at all. Only thing you need is your license and two parts of your DVLA license, and you're off and you borrow their bike, but the second option is a lot more expensive. I took my own bike because I, I had already bought my own bike. But for some people it might be hard because um, you can't, you, if you've got a bike and you can't take it there, so you might have to consider using their bikes. But, I mean, it's not that much of a difference. It's like 30 pounds on average. So, um, once you've done that, you go, you turn up on the arranged date and you have to sign this form thing saying that yeah you're doing a CBT they check your license they check both parts of your license they check your insurance if you've got your own bike they check your bike if you've got your own bike like your road tax if it's roadworthy things like that and after that you get in your group of four or whatever and then um, he basically takes you to this private car park thing where you have to do a set of drills which can be from circles in around the car park, it could be figure of eight, it could be things like that. So it's, it's not really that hard, I mean, um, anyone can do it really. I mean, I didn't struggle at all because ever since I was a little kid I've always driven motorbikes and stuff and I do motocross so it's kind of easy for me. Oh, hello, in the car. She was, she was alright. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, fucking girl. She made me forget. Um, yeah, so he makes you do a certain amount of drills. Not a certain amount, a certain set of drills. I mean, with me, what happened was I, we were doing figure of, um, no, we were doing circles and the other people kept crashing. So he made us do it over and over again for ages, like an hour or so. And I went up to him and I said, look, you know, I can drive a bike. Um, is it okay if I don't do this now? And then he was like, you've got a fair point there, mate. Um, I'm convinced that you can 
do circles around the car park so you can sit beside till this drill ends. And until the others got the hang of it, um, yeah, we were there, I was just sitting in the side. And every time he introduced a new drill, like the next drill was figure of eight, he got me to demonstrate, which was pretty cool. And then we had to do emergency stops, which wasn't that hard. You had to do an emergency stop without crashing. Which, I mean, I guess for some people it could be hard, but but with my experience it wasn't really hard. Everyone apart from me crashed, so... But they weren't really experienced riders, they were all kind of new, so that was kind of expected. So once, once he's convinced that you're safe with a bike and you can drive one, it, they take you into their little office thing, they make you sign something else. And basically what this says is, it's like, you're, when you're out on the road it's your own responsibility, they're not... Like, um, your own safety is your own responsibility and things like that and they just try to and that's it really um, you just sign it and it states like your insurance and stuff and things like that so once you've done that um, he gives you a headphone and a walkie talkie and you just kind of carry that with you and um, one tip this is an absolute tip yeah <laughs> when I when I did it um, I had left the headphone on full volume and fuck me, that was really loud, really loud, it really hurt my ears. Um, so that's a quick tip, make sure it's not too loud. And then um, he takes you out in groups of two. Um, he takes you on the road, he takes you to some calm, quiet places. And he just makes, he just, you just ride around, he, and he makes sure that you're safe and that you're make, doing your mirror checks, so like, um, right. Um, he makes sure that you indicate, everything like that, you know, indicate properly. Oh yeah, sorry, before he takes you out, after you've completed the drills in the car park, um, he does sort of a theory test kind of thing, it's not really a theory test. Um, he basically tests your knowledge on the road. Um, um, yeah, he shows you a few roundabout pictures and he kind of like talks to you, he's like, um, so if a car was coming here, who gives way to who? Um, as we all know, you give way to the car on your right all the time. That car's turning left, so I can I can come out. We all know that. That's, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, so once he's convinced that you know your highway code, once you're convinced that you, he, once he's convinced that you know your highway code, he. Um, he takes you on the road, so yeah. He shows you some, oh yeah, he shows some signs as well. So once you're on the road, he just checks you. And then he makes you do roundabouts. On mine, I'll tell you a little story thing. Um, he got kind of annoyed with me because um, he took us to this like place with two roundabouts and we were doing like figure of eights around them. And basically what happened was um, I was doing my checks wrong or something. But I was like, in, when, I, um, when I indicated, what I was doing is, I was indicating, checking, no, sorry, I was checking my mirror, doing a lifesaver check, and then indicating. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, um, wait, sorry, I was indicating and then doing my checks. Oh, third time. Alright, so what you're supposed to do is, you're supposed to mirror check, lifesaver check, indicate, and then as you're going into the corner, you do another mirror check, lifesaver check, and then you turn. Um, so that's a little tip. So, um, yeah, he was kind of annoyed, but, I mean, I, I got the hang of it. Um, what else? Yeah, so he, he brings you back, and that's about it. And you, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention, you have to do, like, an eyesight check from 25 metres, I believe, they make you read a number plate. Um, it's easy if you've got normal eyesight. I mean, if you don't, you probably wear glasses, which should be easy for you anyway, so... So that's about it really, I mean, when I, um, now this is all going to be like, this information bit's kind of finished, and this is all like my personal experiences kind of thing, so you can turn off right now if you want, but up to you really. Um, so when I was doing my CBT, I was really panicky, I was, I was scared, even though everyone kept telling me that, they were like, hey man, it's so easy, don't worry about it, I was still paranoid. And I, I kept thinking that I was going to fail, even though I know 
talking quite a lot about the road and bikes and stuff, but that's just me being annoying, really. But, um, yeah, I did loads of revision, even though I didn't need to, but it did help, you know. Uh, it made me a lot more confident.